Hi guys. I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these thick crochet mesh pot holders. And they're really easy to make and they they work up really quick. And with this thick crochet mesh, you have two different options. You have this look or you have you can turn it inside out like that. Then you have another kind of indention look to it. So it's up to you what look you want to go for. So I'm going to show you how to make one of these and how to close it up and everything. All you need for this project is some worst weight yarn. It can be variegated or not variegated, it doesn't matter. But uh, this stitch really looks beautiful either way, but especially with variegated yarn. So what you need to get is a four ply yarn or for the U.S. and ten ply for the, the U.K. or Australia, and also. Uh, 5 millimeter hook or a size H hook and you can use a tapestry needle to sew, sew your um, your pot holder closed or you can just use your hook and do it by single crochet. It's up to you. I like the flatter look of the tapestry needle so I use that. So that's all you're going to need. So grab your 5 millimeter hook or size H hook and make your slip knot get just a little closer here for you. Okay, to begin you want to chain 31. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. So once you get your 31 made, you want to start by going in through the second chain from the hook. So you have 31 now, but you're about to lose one just now. So you'll have a total of 30 stitches. So it's your first single crochet. Now work one single crochet all the way down. And like I said at the end, you should have 30 stitches. Okay, got my 30 done. Extra count your stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. I'm counting funny. I confuse you. I confuse myself. Okay, what we want to do now is single crochet in that same stitch. This very last stitch, you want to single crochet in that again. So now you have two single crochets in this one, this last one. You want to pivot your work. Now you're going to be working in the bottom stitches here. But you already put one in this last chain. So now you want to move to the next stitch. So that first one was one, and that's two, three. Just be working. I'm going underneath both of the stitches here. The other way, I only went under one of the chain. This one, I'm using the other two parts of the chain. Anyway, make your way down here and count your stitches. You should have 30 going this way too, and a total of 60 all the way around. Okay come to the end of my round and I counted my stitches I have 60 so to start round 2 this is my beginning stitch I want to slip stitch into my beginning stitch chain 1 and in that same stitch that you just slip stitched into go back into that stitch and do a double crochet and then chain one. Then you'll want to skip one stitch. This is the stitch we just did, so you want to skip this one and go into this next one and also do a double crochet and chain one. Skip one stitch and then double crochet and chain one. 
You want to continue to do the double crochet and chain one, skipping one stitch in between all the way around. You want to go down this direction, then you're going to turn, pivot your work, and come back all the way to here. And then when you get to here, I will show you how to end the round. So just make sure that you are skipping only one stitch and that you're going into the next. Okay, come into the end of my row. This is where we began. And I know it looks like there's two stitches here, but there really is only one stitch. The other one is where we slip stitched. So this was our last stitch. We slip stitched into this one and it made what looks like another stitch here. But it's not, it's just a slip stitch. This double crochet is the actual stitch. So this is the only one you'll, you're going to be counting is this top of the double crochet that we did. So, so if you want to count your stitches, you should have 30. Okay, so what you're going to do is this is the stitch that you will skip. This is where we slip stitch, so don't count that one. So don't don't panic, you're good. If you saw this and was like, what? I'm missing one. So what you want to do is slip stitch into that top, the first double crochet, and then chain one. Now it's gonna we should have these little things forming. Now if you can see, I know it's difficult, but just right below it to the left in this skipped stitch that we have, I want you to put a double crochet there. So for the first stitch and the first stitch only, we're going to be working to the right. Or if you're left-handed, you'll be working to the left. Just for this one stitch only, put your double crochet in that, that um, skip stitch we did and you want to chain one and then now we're going to be working our regular way this is the next skipped stitch here so we're going to be putting a double crochet in that one as well we're going to be working the same row row two putting a double crochet there then you put a double crochet chain one then you go into the next skip stitch, one row down here. And again, you want to put a double crochet and chain one. And keep putting a double crochet and chain, chaining one all the way around. We're doing the thick crochet mesh if you've never done this stitch before. I do have a beginner tutorial if you need. So just continue working the double crochet one row down all the way around double crochet chain one double crochet chain one so you get back up to the beginning and this is round three so when you get up here to the end I'll show you how to end round three okay I made it to the end of round three the very last double crochet of the round you don't chain one from here on out. So for the rest of this uh, project, the very last double crochet of the round, do not chain one. Because you're going to slip stitch in the top of the first double crochet that you did, just like that. And that creates the chain one for that space. Now to begin round four, you're going to chain one and this is how you will continue to do this until you have a total of 19 rounds. So you slip stitch in there at the end, you chain one, and now you're going to be working two rows down to the left of the double crochet. So basically round two, your first set of double crochets that you did, you're going to be working to the left of it. And then the next round, you're going to be working to the left of this double crochet and so on and so forth. You're always going to be working down to the previous rows. You're always going to be skipping one round, which would be this one. 
and going down one more and putting a double crochet to the left of the double crochet down below. So you can find it by using your finger if you need. Again for the first stitch of the round you're going to be working to the right so you want to go down and do your double crochet and chain one to the right there and now I'm going to start working as normal to the left now you always want to put it two rows down to the left of the double crochet and I know it may seem difficult but once you get it down the stitch is very easy to do just want to go down two rows double crochet chain one skip over next one double crochet and chain one you're just going to continue to do this for a total of 19 rounds and you can count your rounds by counting your diagonal and I'll show you because it's easier with this other one here that I started you can always count from the very first round you did and just count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 you know continue up diagonally until you have 19 then once you have 19 decide which side that you want to use you can use the thick mesh on this side or the inside looks pretty cool too so what I'm going to do for this round 20 is we're going to do exactly what we were doing this whole time except instead of doing double crochets we're going to be doing single crochets so I'm going to start my round again I already slip stitched and chained one so now all I want to do is go into that same space that I would normally go into to the right of my starting point except this time I'm only going to do a single crochet and then chain one I'm going to be closing these gaps left by the double crochets this round so then you go into your next space do a single crochet and chain one just continue that around around 20 and then I can show you how to close this up oh I forgot to tell you here on the uh, last stitch when you're ready to do your last stitch here you can chain one on the last single crochet as usual it's my last stitch here. You can chain one and um, or not, it's up to you. You just need to slip stitch into that beginning double crochet to slip stitch and, the, and then that's when it ends. And then you take your pot holder and fold it in half like that. It kind of goes naturally. And then this is where you can start single crocheting. You can slip stitch all the way up to here and then just slip stitch back and forth or you can do the tapestry needle which is what I'm going to do okay I just got done my single crochets and now you have an option to either go in through the opposite side and do a slip stitch like this and continue going down each stitch to one side then grab its equal on the other side and do a slip stitch or single crochet it's up to you single I mean slip stitches um, maybe flatter I don't know you could try it if you prefer because some people just don't want to uh, to do the tapestry needle which is fine and if you're doing the um, single crochet method then when you get to the very end here uh, just chain like five or six depending on how big of a loop you want and then slip stitch to connect on this side 
and then chain one, cut your yarn, leaving yourself a bit of tail, and then work in your tail. And that'll also give you a loop, but you'll have a loop on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and chain one and cut my yarn. And leave yourself quite a bit of yarn because you want to make a loop on the end. So I'm going to take my tiny needle here, thread, and I'm just going to work up through these stitches here to bring my needle back up to the top, just like that. Pull your yarn up this way. Well, now you can decide which side that you want to sew. I'm going to keep this, this side. Now I'm going to be working the one stitch, then going to the other stitch when it's equal on the other side. Try to make sure you keep it straight as you can. And then just work leaving yourself a little bit of tail like this, a little bit of a hook. Don't pull your, your hook all the way tight. And then again, and using using your fingers here like this. Make it equal. Put your needle back through there, just like that. Then again, pull your yarn through, just like that. And then now, if you want to make sure that your loops don't come loose, I just use both of them and tie a knot like that. Now you have a couple of loops you can use to hang it on something. So once you got your loop, you just keep continuing down back and forth until you get back up to the end here. Okay, I'm just finishing my last stitch on this side. Leaving myself a little loop here. I'm going to feed my tapestry needle in just to create a knot. And I'm going to do that one more time just to secure my thread a little. Okay. Now I'm going to work to hide my tail up through the stitches here that I just made by sewing. Just like that, tug it, cut it down as close as you can to your project, and there you go. That's how you make a thick crochet mesh pot holder. And I made one of these for my uh, mother-in-law. And she thought that it was a bit too thick. So what she did is she used it as a hot pad for a little while. And it flattened it and kind of thinned it up. And now she's using it as a, as a pot holder. So if you feel it's too thick, you can always use it for a hot pad for a little bit. And it will thin it out and then you can use it for a pot holder. But I don't have a problem with that. I got big hands, long fingers, so I'll be using this as a pot holder. So thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and share this video with others so that other people can find me. And please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.